Hi. <laughs> um, so, some people have asked me to make a video about how I quit smoking, because I reference the fact a lot that I used to smoke, like, a pack and a half to two and a half packs a day, just depending on how many hate comments I was getting. I'd smoke one cigarette per troll. Some people say their haters make them famous. My haters just made me cough up mucus and it hurted. It hurted. I have a lot to talk about, so I don't feel like this video is just going to be for people who smoke, but maybe just the idea in general of doing things that you don't want to do and how to attempt to stop doing them. Uh, because that's important to me. By the way, I don't normally put music in the background of my videos, but I'm thinking now, like, why should only exploitative true crime video people get, like, a chill slash creepy instrumental going on behind them as they tell a story? This is a creepy story. This is, like, a scary story. Me smoking cigarettes? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that later. I'm gonna add it in. And then I'll call this video the disappearance of Drew Monson's smoking habit, and I'll just be, like, my face zoomed in, and I just look like I've never slept before. By the way, if you're not subscribe to my second channel. Last month, I publicly offered to help Tom Holland quit smoking. I don't know if he actually smokes. People sent me pictures of him smoking, but that's alleged. I don't want to get hurt. I'm also not saying that Tom Holland would feel the need to hurt me. That's alleged too. He could be nonviolent. It's possible. Like, I saw photos of him smoking, but knowing kids these days, these teens could Photoshop a dang Siggy into Spider-Man's mitts within seconds. By the way, if you've watched me for a while, you may recall like three or four years ago, I think, I made a video called explaining my leaked video because my friend posted like an Instagram story of me smoking a cigarette like outside of an Arby's. And as a YouTuber, I know a clickbait opportunity when I experience one. That's a classic clickbait, by the way, because like it implies something that it 100% isn't while also not completely being a lie. And that's the key. Honey mama. That's YouTube, baby. Your friend posts you smoking, explaining my leaked video. Going to the store? I'm leaving. Call your video, I'm leaving. Your fans would be like, is he gonna stop making content? Oh no, he just ran out of milk. I know I say milk wrong, by the way. You could finish a jigsaw puzzle. Call the video, I'm done with this. Everyone will be like, what's he done with? Oh, it's just, <laughs> it's just a big painting of a river. He's done with that. He put the pieces together. He's done. By the way, what do you think of my background right now? I'm using the natural light. My window is open. This is a fake plant. It's from Walmart. If this was real, it would be dead already. I don't respect nature. There's another one. Talk about how you can't take care of plants. Call your video. I killed somebody. Oh, by the way, so this video is sponsored by Hello. So let me tell you, I was sick and tired of my usual routine And I was eating nothing special, I would settle for some beans And then a buck showed up one morning and it opened up my brain It had a bunch of different recipes, my life's about to change I think I'm sponsored by Hello that doesn't look good. She's nice. I like doing this literally. I feel accomplished. I feel like a chef. And that's what I've always wanted. I hate worrying about food. It takes that stress right off my plate. Not a pun. Don't giggle. Stop. Ser I'm being serious. They only give me the ingredients that I need. I'm not wasting food like a boy. It's easy to clean up. I'm, I'm going to eat it now. I'm going to eat that now. I'm going to eat you now. Oh my god. I can't believe I did that. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code THANKSDREWOMG16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. HelloFresh.com, THANKSDREWOMG16, uh, 16 free meals, 3 free gifts. Uh, I'm nice. If you want to do it, you should do it. I recommend it, for real. Um, that's it. Yeah, okay. I'm nice. 
Okay, for real, smoking. I remember, by the way, in elementary school, one of my teachers was giving us one of those, like, don't do bad things speeches, like, way too early. Like, it doesn't mean anything to 10 year olds. We're all gonna do what we're gonna do. It has nothing to do with what you say to us right now. But he, I don't know why he would play this game with us, but he goes, raise your hand, guys, and be honest. Raise your hand if you think that you will ever smoke cigarettes. And one kid, I still remember so vividly, is just like, and he goes, okay, good, why? And we all just like look at this guy. I'm not gonna say his name. Let's just, let's just call him Tom H. I'm gonna get sued. I need to stop. But literally the kid goes, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably try it one day. And of course at the time I was like, you dirty little freak. You little weirdo. Why don't you just, you're a goner. Why don't you just walk on down to the morgue right now and turn yourself in. Cut to, of course, me 15 years later just coughing so hard in a parking lot like I'm seeing stars and feel like I'm gonna fall down because turns out I too decided at some point that I'd like to try smoking. I remember the only references I really had to smoking were like movies and like that moment and I remember my parents, they would always refer to, my dad used to smoke and they would talk about it as if he like used to murder people, like it was so serious and dark. The famous story that my parents used to tell my sister and I was that my dad proposed to my mom on the beach and my mom said, I won't marry you un until you quit smoking. I swear. And I guess that did it for him. It doesn't seem like it would work. I guess that's my main tip. If you want to quit smoking, ask for my mother's hand in marriage. She'll take care of it for you. Want to quit smoking? Become my new stepdad. I mean, they did end up getting divorced, obviously. Look at me. I got long hair for a reason. Which honestly just shows you it's true what they always say, never begin a marriage with an ultimatum. But then, by the way, my mom told me only a few years ago that the only reason that they met or started talking, because they met in like a theater class in San Francisco, and my mom thought my dad was cute or something. I hate saying that. But he went outside to smoke, like during the class break, and she went outside to talk to him, pretended that she smoked, and asked him for a cigarette. And honestly, I think that after she told me that, deep down when I was smoking, I was like, I can't quit. What if this is how I meet my love and make my own baby Drew? I do not want a baby Drew, by the way. If I had a baby Drew, I honestly, I'd ghost it. That's such a good title, by the way. I ghosted my baby. And the thumbnail, just like a giant baby head with a single tear, and then like me in the background, like, I don't care. But seriously, I remember growing up, like, smoking was this horrifying thing. Like, I remember I had some friend at school whose mom smoked, and, like, I knew about it because there was, like, a rumor. Like, did you know that, did you know his mom, I heard she does it in the backyard. And I was just like, should we call the cops? It's, it's our duty to dial 911 right now. <laughs> Imagine they actually show up. Ma'am! Get in the car! But it is a serious thing, you know, because it kills you. And it's this weird thing that, like, everybody used to do, I guess, when they first came out, and then they realized that it, like, definitely kills you. And now not that many people do the cigarettes, but a lot of people do, like, this weird digital version of it that, like, is it better? I think it is, but also whenever I look up, like, is vaping better for you? It's like, we hope, I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. But I say all this to say, like, I never, thought I would smoke. Like, I didn't even think about it, cause like, of course not. Like, you might as well ask me, hey Drew, do you think you'll ever hit a bird with your car on purpose? No, because I'm a good person. And also, I don't drive a car, I'm scared. But if, but if, I, if I did, I wouldn't hit a bird. Especially not an exotic one. You think I'm gonna run over a macaw? You think I'm gonna run over a macaw? This one's fake too. But I was a stressed out kid. I've been thinking about this lately. Like, I, all kids have meltdowns. Like, of course they do. But I think I had like 14 to 15 more meltdowns a month or a week than most kids. Like, if a car alarm went off, I would like slap myself in the face. I couldn't help it. I have a picture here. This is me just trying so hard not to completely just lose all of it. Look at my hands. I put them like between my thighs just to keep myself from going nutty. And I think honestly like I've never changed. I've just learned that it's not socially acceptable to freak out in such a big way all the time. And if you don't actually learn the skills to not freak out inside, but you feel like you can't freak out outside, you I'll just start making bad decisions to try and soothe the freaking out child deep down in your heart.
right? You just push him down and it just comes out instead as like, I'm gonna do the wrong thing all by myself tonight. You know what I mean? So anyway, fast forward to, you know, 21 years old. I'm a mildly successful YouTuber living in LA, doing what anyone would do in that situation and hanging out with other mildly successful YouTubers in LA around the streets of West Hollywood at midnight, just trying so hard to live a life. And honestly, like hanging out with other YouTubers YouTubers, especially around that time, it was this weird thing where it was like, none of us really had a job, but like we did, but not really, but we had money and a lot of free time. So it was just like, wanna hang out on Wednesday? Yeah, sure, I'm pretty much free on Wednesday and also Thursday through Tuesday all the time until I feel like doing something about once a month. But I remember so clearly, I was walking around West Hollywood and I looked at my friend and he was always smoking. He would smoke all the time and I was like, listen, I like him, he likes this, what, what, would it be so wrong to just try? And I turned to him and I was like, can I have one? And like, I heard myself say it, you know? And I knew, like, Drew, your dad, the kid in school who raised his hand, the kid with the mom in the backyard, don't do it. And I think I like half expected, you know, in a moment where you're about to do something wrong, like, I thought, okay, my mom's gotta like pop out of the bushes and be like, Drew Monson, that's the wrong thing. You're supposed to do the right thing. Get in the car. One, I'm gonna count. To, if I get to five, I'm gonna smack that Marlboro right out of your hand. What do you think you are, Tom Holland? You're a freak. Tom Holland is not a freak. Honestly, yes I am. Tom, you watch my vi- I love your story times. Tom. But yeah, honestly, like, and I'm not encouraging it at all because it will ruin your life before killing you painfully, but there's something clearly very exhilarating about being a young person and just watching yourself do the wrong thing. And I think it's a very, you know, unhealthy but temporarily effective way of feeling like an adult when you don't know how to feel like that yet. It's like, I can't do my dishes or pay my electric bill on time even though I have the money in my my bank account, but I can, you know, light this little stick <laughs> on fire and inhale tar, and that's gonna do something, right? Like, it feels like you grew up, even though really you're being immature. Because <sighs> I think that, like, in that moment, I wasn't really asking for a cigarette. I wasn't like, I really want to see what a cigarette tastes like. I've been smelling them at bus stops my whole life, and I really like to breathe that scent in directly. I think I was saying, like, hey, can you help me cross this imaginary line in my head from being a good kid into a bad kid. Can we do that together and see what happens? And you can just do that. Isn't it kind of scary, like, to just realize that you can just mess up and you have that power now, and depending on the people you surround yourself with, they're not gonna say, hey, they're gonna be like happy that you're joining them. I know this seems like an overreaction to one cigarette, but I'm talking about like everything. But anyway, he complied and I took it in my hand and smoked it and let me tell you, and I wanna be careful here because I know that like from my perspective, even if someone is like, here's this thing that was really fun but completely destroyed everything, it took away my family and all my happiness and my life savings, all I will hear is like, so what you're saying is that it was really fun? But I gotta be honest, do not do it if you haven't. But when I smoked that cigarette, I felt like I had 10 cups of coffee in a good way. It didn't like taste good at all, but it was like the type of bad taste that I was very willing to put up with. You know? But I remember we went to like this club and I went outside and I saw this YouTuber that like I kind of knew, but I just couldn't stop talking and I started talking to him and telling him about it. He will remain nameless. Let's just say that his name rhymes with booty guy. Just kidding. That was supposed to be a PewDiePie joke, but I would never talk to him. PewDiePie, if you're watching this, I will ghost you in person like my son. But I remember, I was telling this guy all about it. I literally remember saying, I just had my first cigarette, which is like a little kid thing to say, like as if a little kid had his first cigarette. Like it sounded like my parents were like prompting me to tell an adult something like, tell him what you had, Drew. My first cigarette? Tell him what kind it was. 
menthol. And by the way, I went back inside just to illustrate like how quickly I was hooked. I went into the bathroom. This was like one of those fancy places. Have you ever been somewhere with like a bathroom attendant? And he didn't just have like mints and a towel. He had like a tiny gift shop. And I remember he was selling cigarettes in the bathroom. And I was immediately like, how much? I would like those bathroom cigarettes. What flavor are they? Pee pee? Also, how long is this? I feel like I've been talking for a half an hour. This video should just be called How I Smoked. I haven't gotten to the stopping part, but I will. I will. I always do. And I felt so cool. Just being honest, I, f I mean, I hate to say it, but I felt hot. I felt like a hottie. I hate to say it, but love to live it. But I mean, like, you can start out smoking to be cool, but it quickly becomes just for you. Like, it can start as like a performance, like, wow, every car driving by right now, I want what they're thinking. They probably think that I'm a musician. I don't know why. That honestly was sometimes I'd be like, I bet I look like a cool musician from the 60s right now, which like, why don't you just have a guitar? Because you can't smoke a guitar. I probably could. But, you know, it can start out that way, but like a year later when you're crouched under a tree in the rain, trying so hard to get like a half broken lighter to work that your thumb is turning completely red. You know what I mean? It stops being hot in that moment. Or maybe it's still hot. I don't know. Maybe my friend should leak another video. You tell me. No, I don't smoke anymore. And let me just be clear. Being addicted to smoking sucks. It's like torture. It feels like you're in a toxic relationship with someone who just will not let go of you and you kind of love them but you don't really even know if you do anymore. You don't even know the difference between hate and love. Honestly, being addicted to anything sucks. If there's anything in your life besides like eating, drinking, human touch, necessary medications, that if someone takes it away from you, you go, oh, oh, what do I do? Where do I go? Wait, what, what, what? That's really bad. That is misery. Like even if you're not stopping and you're still giving yourself access to it all day, it's the knowing that you would lose it if you didn't have it. Like I feel that way with my phone, where I'm like, I like this so much and I hate how much I like it. And I don't want this in my life. This isn't like just looking at yourself and being like, this is not what I wanted my life to be. Like I did not want to be tethered to something so completely. And it's also just the hopelessness of being like, as much as I hate this, I cannot for the life of me imagine a world. I can't even begin to fathom what that would even look like. Like I try to conjure up an image of like whether it's me not smoking or me not using my phone all the time. And it's just like my brain draws a blank. It's just like, we can't, we can't figure it out. We can like have an entire dream about a dog hitting you with a bird. <laughs> but this one, we got nothing. By the way, speaking of dogs, I'm imagining the comments right now and I shouldn't do this, but like, you know, a minute ago when I was like, if there's anything you need besides food, water, human touch, I think someone's, at least one person is gonna be like, what about my dog? People with dogs are always mad at me. Like no matter what I say, I think dogs are so cute. They're a little bit too loud, but they're very cute. But I swear I could be like, dogs are interesting. And there's someone like, why? Why? Why are they interesting? Are they your little toy? Are you a sick freak? Sick freak. Get him. Get the sick freak. They sick my dog. They sick their dog on me for being a sick freak. I'm a rapper. I need to admit it. But yeah, anyway, I became addicted like pretty quickly. It wasn't like right away a pack a day, but it was it was pretty soon. And my friends and family started noticing like, so this is like, this is you now, this is your thing. That's the thing about smoking is like, everybody knows it's bad. No one's like, oh, you smoke. You don't, I didn't know you smoked. They're like, okay, when is this ending? What What is this? What's going on? Stop. And like you want to. Like I don't think that's the thing that annoys me when people talk about smokers. Like as if it's this thing that we're all like this is exactly what I want. Like I don't think anyone's like I'm gonna smoke until the day I die. As I was saying that I realized there's no way that's true. There's probably 25 million 75 year olds right now. Like I do not care. And if you know one of them, honestly send them a link to this video. Maybe they'll like it. They'll probably <laughs> turn it off in 30 seconds like, who's Todd Holland? I need to stop talking about TH. That's my new addiction. I'm gonna have a video in two years called How I Quit Tom Holland. <laughs> That's what Zendaya is. Ugh, stop. It's not interesting. But I was very addicted. It was the ritual. You know, I had my little spot. Wherever I was living, there's a spot that you go to the most. It was a balcony for a while where I honestly, 
I had a balcony where I would sit out on like a cheap chair I got at a thrift store, and there was just a little ashtray, but I smoked so much that I would fill up the ashtray in like two days, and this is disgusting, but I just started like putting them on the ground because I was like, I'm not technically littering. This is my apartment. This is my balcony. I'll, I'd do like a once a month. I would just start crying like, why am I like this? You spend a lot of time outside and in parking lots when you smoke cigarettes. Like I used to smoke so much at the parking lot of my last apartment complex that I was like in tune with the entire community. I was like, oh, unit 47 got a new hat. Somebody he's moving in like I, I felt like a security guard. I smelled all the time. I still have like a 4.8 rating on Uber. You ever done that like look at what people, I don't know why the drivers are allowed to rate you. Like I know technically why that could help them but it seems kind of unfair that I just go in and sit down and they're like three stars. From what? I didn't, I, I never, I've never done anything wrong in my life. But I honestly think that like to this day, I still don't have a great Uber rating because I would just walk in and stink up their car. I smelled, I still smell, but not like cigarettes. Just kidding. People think that like, I'll make jokes about, I used to have greasier hair and people will still be like, oh, you're like, you, you can't make the joke. I, I'll be like, I'm greasy. And then I'd get all these comments when I was like 22 being like, okay, greasy pig. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. And also I do feel like clean. Like, can you tell that I've cleaned myself up a little bit? I hope that shows because I've done some work, but really it's just for me. So don't say that it shows because it doesn't matter what you think. But yeah, my smoking just got worse and worse. I would go out like every 20 to 30 minutes. In the pandemic, I just lost control completely. Like I would smoke four or five cigarettes in a row, just listening to music. And that's what I would tell myself, like, how am I gonna stop smoking? What will I do when I listen to music? Like all these irrational things that don't really mean anything. Like if you're addicted to something and you're coming up with stuff like that, just know it doesn't actually make any sense and you will realize that a year after you stop and you'll look back like, what? Like, I thought I couldn't live without that? Like, her? Like, if you handed me a cigarette right now and said, hey, you used to think you couldn't live without this, I'd be like, you're making a joke and it's not funny. This smells terrible, why would I say that? I don't know why in this scenario I've created I also don't remember smoking like I got in a car accident because I hit a bird on purpose. Remember that? Is anyone still watching this? By the way, I just remember when I smoked, I would try, like I would try to limit myself and the way I would do it, this is so weird. I would like remember what text message I had sent when I went out to smoke. So I'd be like, uh, how long has it been? Has it been 30 minutes yet? And I would go back cause I'd just be texting all day when I would smoke. And I'd be like, okay, I said, hi, how are you at 1230? Ah, it's only 1255, five more minutes. That was just such a weird way to live my life. This is disgusting. I guess trigger warning for just gross body stuff, I would throw up. Like, uh, not on purpose, I would throw up because I was smoking so much and then I'd have like a bunch of Kraft mac and cheese. It was horrible and I think I like developed this back pain, I don't think because of smoking, but what ended up happening was I noticed when my back was hurting all the time and when I would smoke it would get worse. I don't know if that's true. I'm always coming up with stuff like that and telling my friends like, when I eat oatmeal I get creative and they're like, Okay. But it was making like all the pain in my body worse. I would cough. I swear there was like a few nights where I coughed for like two or three hours straight. And I was like, I, this has to be, I'm going to like fall down. Like I shouldn't even be alone right now. And I just felt horrible about the entire thing. It was just this constant feeling of like, I do not want to be doing this. Ooh, I want to do that. Why am I doing that? I do not want to be doing this. Ooh, I would love to go do that. That sounds really fun. That made me feel horrible. I hated that I did that. And that cycle was terrible and I couldn't take it anymore. This thing started happening where I think just because my anxiety had increased so much like by 2020 that it was so physical. Like you know how physical it can get? And when I would smoke my first cigarette in the morning, which used to be the best one, I would immediately like, it felt like I was gonna fall down. My heart would get to like 130, 140 right away. It wasn't even working anymore. It was doing the opposite of working, but yet I still was terrified to stop. And that was the point where I was like, this doesn't make 
any sense. I was just really scared of withdrawal. I was scared of like that first, everyone says like those first three days are horrible. Those first two weeks, you just get past those. And I was like, no, 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 I don't want any of that. I will put this off for 20 more years to avoid three days of misery, even though I was currently having misery all the time. That just seems so unbelievably scary to me. I put it off. And that was the main thing for me was like the fear. Like I wanted to quit smoking. Like if you gave me a button and said if you press that, you won't want to smoke anymore, I would eat that button. <laughs> I would smoke that button. But for real. I would smoke that button. But just this feeling like, again, of like, what would that look like? I remember thinking like, what, when am I gonna go outside though? If I stop smoking, like, what am I just gonna watch a whole movie? I couldn't watch movies. I would go to the movie theater and leave like four times and I would get to know the guy at the door like, eh, and he'd be like, uh-huh, you're gonna do that again. Like, I'd be like, can I come back in if I go out and smoke? That was my whole life. I couldn't eat at a restaurant because I'd be thinking about how I just wanted to go outside and smoke. And and it's like one of the worst things to be addicted to because there's so many places you can't do it. Like I went to Disneyland once with my cousins. I Googled beforehand like, can you smoke anywhere at Disneyland? And I couldn't find any information on that. So I bought nicotine gum. I was chewing it all day. But all I was, I couldn't enjoy Mickey. I couldn't enjoy Goofy, the wondrous. The wondrous charm of Goofy Goof didn't even register for me because I just wanted to pick him up, spin him around, turn him into a stogie, and <laughs> what? No, I shouldn't say that. And like through all of those experiences and all of the wreckage I could feel it doing to my body and the fact that like I wasn't just like smoking, some people smoke a half a packet, I was smoking like two packs a day, like I wasn't just gonna get cancer, like I was asking for cancer, like my grandpa died of lung cancer, like I think both of my grandpas died of smoking, real. it's it was not good. But I looked at it and I was like, okay. I just like had a talk with myself in my head for like a while and I always do, but I was just like, I have no plans to quit. If you asked me, are you gonna be smoking in a year? And I was being honest with you, I'd be like, I'd take a big sigh first, but I'd be like, yeah, I probably will. So I just decided, I went, what if I quit really, really slowly? Like really slowly. Cause people talk about like weaning off and it's always like smoke 20 and then 15 the next day. And I was like, I wanna go 100 times slower than that because if I'm gonna be smoking for another year anyway, I might as well even spend that entire year stopping in like a kind, patient way. Like that was the key. I would decide it, like I'm, I've set an intention. I'm gonna be really patient with myself because I'm smoking anyway. Cause I didn't wanna set myself up for failure like I had before where it's just like, you're doing a bad thing and you gotta stop right now and if you mess up, then you're bad and do it more. Cause that's what had kept happening and I didn't know the difference even between like stopping smoking, the idea of just stopping cold turkey. I felt like I quit cold turkey after every cigarette. I was like, I don't wanna do that anymore. I'm done with that. But of course, come 30 minutes, come me scrolling through my text messages. Oh, I sent this ugly selfie 25 minutes ago. Here we go. I would want it again. And I was like, okay, first step is I'm going to look at this emotionally. I don't know why I did this or how, maybe I read something online. I can't remember, but I was like, I'm going to be mindful, which is such an annoying word. And I don't even like when people talk about it, but I think even doing this with cigarettes ended up kind of changing my life because I was like, I'm going to look at how I feel before and how I feel after every cigarette. Cause I had so many opportunities to do that. And it was like a, a very easy way to just like see the inner workings of my brain and immediately be mindful. So when when I would smoke, I would register, like I would make a little bookmark in my head. Okay, how do I feel right now? And pretty much all the time when I was about to smoke, I would feel like I am so uncomfortable because all I want to do is smoke right now. So how I was feeling was usually uncomfortable and having an intense craving. And I would go out and I would smoke. And when I found, because it's weird, because you'd expect that I'd have a craving, feel uncomfortable, then smoke and the craving would be gone. I'd feel a little bit calmer, like what you'd expect from a smoker. But what I found was that I felt felt 
disappointment. All that would happen is I would really want a cigarette and imagine it as this amazing thing. I'd go out, I'd smoke, and even halfway through the cigarette, I'd be like, Oh God, this didn't, once again, this did nothing. Once again, I thought this was gonna be something that it wasn't. This sucks, my life sucks, I feel the same, or I feel worse. But for real though, like it unlocked something in me because I was seeing it for what it was. Like I realized that I was feeling more anxious. And it was crazy, because like if you would have asked me before, like, hey, why do you smoke? I'd be like, eh, I know it's bad, but like it calms me down. I have anxiety, I know it's unhealthy, but like it does something for me. When I started being mindful about it, I realized that like I would feel kind of uncomfortable, really want a cigarette, smoke a cigarette, and then five minutes later, I'd like have an anxiety attack and not blame it on the cigarette. I'd be like, that has nothing, that's just my pesky anxiety disorder that I've been diagnosed with and isn't my fault, and if I ever acknowledge that there could be something that I do that could make it worse, that means the whole thing is my fault, and everything is black and white, and the whole house of cards topples to the ground, and I'm mentally ill because of of my choices, when really it's just like I was contributing to these panic attacks I was having, and I was not acknowledging it, and once I did, I didn't really want to smoke as much anymore. And the other thing I did, and this might sound crazy, but this is like, I, th I think of it like I was sort of harnessing my obsessive compulsive behaviors, like, cause I am someone who will come up with lots of little weird things and I can do very unhealthy rituals and stuff. And there is a way to tap into that in a positive way. So what I would do is after every cigarette, every cigarette, I would go on my phone, open up the clock, and start a stopwatch. And I would wait. I started with, you know, 30 minutes, my normal time before smoking another cigarette, and I turned it into a game with myself. And I was like, let's see, very slowly, again, I was like, let's see if I can do 35. Because then, when I had that feeling, oh, I want a cigarette, it wasn't just, no, you, you can either not have one or have one right now. It was, no, just wait five minutes. And I could do that. Like, that was very doable. And then the next time, not even then jump to 45, jump to like 37, then 39, then 40, and eventually I was waiting an hour before having a cigarette, which at that point was something I hadn't done literally for years besides sleeping. And literally after every cigarette for like months, I would set a stopwatch. And I think turning it into a game is what did it for me because it was a way to prove myself to myself. And I love doing stuff like that. Like I love testing myself. I used to love getting the results of a test in school and like being proud of myself or being disappointed, whatever it was. I like testing my limits. When I take a bath, I like dunk my head underwater and see how long I can do it. And then I go, look what you did, Drew. And this turned it into one of those things. And it started working and it was so exciting because I was constantly, I was telling my friends like, I just went an hour and a half without a cigarette. I just went an hour and 40 minutes without a cigarette. And it was so low pressure because the way I set it up, it was like, I don't, I wasn't even telling myself you have to stop smoking. It was just like, change the way that you smoke. It was like a way to make my brain feel kind of soothed. Like, oh, we're just gonna smoke a tiny bit less. I'm gonna smoke seven minutes later than I used to. That's fine. And then it's just seven, seven, seven. And eventually I got to the point where I was, I went seven hours and that's like two cigarettes in the entire day. And even then, by the way, let me be clear on the timeline here. I did this, I think over like, four or five months, like I went from, I remember I started at like 30, like a pack and a half. I went to like 28 for two weeks, 25 for like a month, 20 for a month. Like I went, I had two cigarettes a day for I think one month. And then I think I did one for like three weeks. I went slow. And what the stopwatch timer thing also did was like, it took away a lot of the fun or what I thought was fun of smoking, which was the chaos. It stripped that away completely because what I liked about smoking was it was a way, again, becoming a bad kid, losing control. I'm just gonna, who cares? I don't care about my life. I kind of want to die, but like really slowly. I want to show everyone that it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna throw it all over the balcony and once it became this like very orderly thing that I was like timing, it 
took away the fun of smoking and turned it into something completely different where it was like my job all of a sudden. But I smoked one cigarette a day for like weeks and weeks and every day I was like, is this the day that I'm gonna wake up and just not do it at all? And by the time I was at one, by the way, the one was not even enjoyable anymore. I like, once you're smoking two or three or four cigarettes a day, you're pretty close to not smoking, but I was still very scared. And on that first day, I mean, I will be honest, it is true. I want to be clear about this. It is true that stopping smoking, there is like a painful period of just like discomfort and irritability. But the thing that I think people don't talk about, I want to like be very firm about this because this is what helped me to realize. They don't talk about the fact that when you're feeling all that discomfort and when you're going through that withdrawal, if you've set an intention and you've set a goal and you're excited, you have to be excited. You might not be, but if you're excited to accomplish something and you can turn it into a positive thing, you're going through withdrawal and this discomfort in a way where it doesn't really, f you know how you can feel pain, but if you know there's a reason for it, it doesn't hurt as bad because it almost becomes like a task that you're completing. Like if you can think of discomfort or pain or anxiety like that, I honestly think you can get through anything because it becomes this thing that you're proud of yourself for. And like, honestly, I bet I could do that like with my phone an internet addiction. I don't want to right now because I like it a lot still, even though I kind of don't, but I can look at pictures of Tom Holland all I want. Please, you have to stop. Don't stop. It's nice. Am I losing my mind right now or being inspirational? I don't know. But I think that even with my phone or anything, as long as when I felt that discomfort, I checked in with myself and reminded myself why I was feeling it and that it was towards a bigger goal, it doesn't really feel like pain anymore. It feels like this weird sort of fun, exciting version of work. So yeah. What if this video just ended with me being like, and honestly, it can just be a fun version of work. And then I just take out a giant cigarette, light it, and I'm like, but honestly, honey, I hate working. And it just cuts to like me and Smash Mouth singing All Star on a big stage. And I'm like, Again, I am an anxious person. Still, like, I'm at least a little bit nervous right now. You know, why are you looking at me like that? Is that a smirk? What's going on? Are you evil, right? But, and I really wanna say this if you happen to be someone watching this right now who does smoke or vape. When I quit smoking, I would say my anxiety, just an estimation, decreased by like 800%. I was at an 8,000%, so again, not perfect. I don't know if that math works out. The highest grade I ever got in a math class, I think was a C minus, and that was just because I think that the teacher was dumb. But seriously, I think that nicotine is like this hidden little monster, and I'm not talking gaga. Stop. Ser are you seriously gonna sing the entirety of Shallow right now? And you want me to do the Bradley Cooper? No, it's fine, just because I'm making a video about smoking. It is good. But people talk a lot about what smoking does to your health and nicotine to your heart, but not nearly enough people, in my opinion, discuss what it does to your brain on a day-to-day -day basis. But what I'm saying is like, I'm an anxious person. I don't believe, at least for myself, I should just say for myself, that I need stimulants, or at least a stimulant that I'm using as needed and works within like 10 seconds and goes away in like an hour. I understand that people with ADHD, like stimulants can have a calming effect. I get that. I am a scientist. I'm not wearing them right now, but I do have like three pairs of glasses. But like I quit drinking caffeine too. And I was someone who was like, it doesn't seem to do much. It just kind of focuses me. I was the, I can drink a Red Bull and take a nap type person. And maybe you are too. And I could right now, still, I could knock one out. You'd be so impressed. You'd be like, oh my God, he's snoring. And that was a king size. We, we love this. But I don't think, and I could be wrong, that that means it's not affecting me later. That I'm not crashing from it after I wake up and not realizing it or attributing it to that. That even if I don't think I feel it, that doesn't mean my body doesn't want more later. I only found this out because I read it online. Cravings are always like a psychological withdrawal. They can be physical too. Like every time that I wanted to smoke, I was experiencing like this depletion. And it was just this up and 
and down. Nicotine will take you on a roller coaster all day that a lot of times you don't even realize that you're really on. But my anxiety is better, not perfect. Like for example, last night I burned my tongue pretty bad on tea. I was eager, you know, and I started doing the thing I do, started shaking a little bit, Googling about it for like 15 minutes, burnt tongue on tea, will he die? I was Googling in the third person, finding out a bunch of info I already knew from the last time I burnt my tongue on tea. I don't know why I always think that my hypochondriac Googles are gonna bring me somewhere different and it's always the same WebMD articles, but the thing is, after like 45 minutes, I calmed down. I'm not kidding, two years ago, that would have been my whole night. It would have launched me into like a three hour pacing session. I wouldn't be able to sleep. Last night, I slept like a baby. That's not true. I woke up like only two times though. And I did sleep like six hours and 45 minutes. And baby, I'm gonna round that up to seven. Like I'm still, Honestly, I would still classify myself as bad, but like I'm a better bad than the bad that I was before and that's big Bubba Boo-boo like I don't want to act like I'm preaching even though I kind of am But I don't want to act like I've got it all figured out because I definitely don't I could barely walk sometimes I'm constantly bumping into frankly innocent people But I wanted to give my perspective on it because I don't know Maybe this is a sign not even for you to quit like this You've done a bad thing beg for forgiveness now 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 or it doesn't matter But to inspire you to even think about quitting and bro 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 it took me like like five and a half years from the first moment that I went, maybe I do this too much, to the moment I actually smoked my last cigarette. And the thinking I was doing about it before I ended up actually doing it was still valuable. And like, I think or I hope that it could potentially be kind of soothing for somebody watching this who might smoke or do something that I, from my perspective, know that there is and believe for you a calmer world out there if you're ever ready to step over into it even though it's hard like it's there even if you never go to it just thinking about how it's there that helped me I used to just think about how one day I wouldn't feel this anxious and I would imagine myself like being able to go to the movies again and I saw a movie last week and it was I didn't really like it but still Okay, I hope you liked that story. Click the like button for him. For him, he went to Camp Creation and now he wants you to create a like and a subscribe. I don't really know what this channel is anymore. This is like my main channel, but I have a second channel. I feel like you know, I referenced that. You must know it if you watch this, but like I talk on like a podcast, but this is like a little more written out. And I, I had a lot I wanted to say about this. And you know, I, I wrote a bunch of this down at midnight. I improvised a lot, but do you feel like I'm lying to you now? Because a lot of that was like, see, I, I literally wrote down, which of course I was like, you dirty little weirdo, this kid's a goner, cut to me 15 years later. Yeah, like, oh, I'm, am I a liar? Check out my Patreon. Oh, I talk on Patreon uh, longer after every video now. So there's like so many hours of videos on there now and like unreleased music and I do live streams. So if you wanna do that, I guess I'll, I'll just talk now for, probably just reveal more personal information about myself and slightly regret it, but know that I'm in a safe space. So if you wanna do that, it's like $5 or more. What a, <laughs> what a scattered ending to something that I worked hard to articulate. Wait, I want, I feel like it should be more. Like I want to dance or something. This is why I didn't go to this. This is why I didn't go to my senior prom. It would just be me. Everybody get out of the way. Oh God, Drew's doing it again. Okay. Bye Tom Holland.